Good morning, class. Welcome to another lecture in regards to the organic chemistry, especially those organic compounds which contain oxygen as the functional group. The ninth chapter of organic chemistry is basically about it, about the ninth chapter is about uh, those organic compounds which contain oxygen as their functional group. We have learned alcohols back in the class. It was before the lockdown situation. And uh, we have learned phenol in our previous lectures here on YouTube. Today's lecture is about another such family of organic compound which contain oxygen as the functional group. I hope you all know that functional group is an atom or a group of atom which donate its chemical properties to the organic compound. Now, ethers have a very interesting functional group and uh, we generally, the general formula that we use for representing ethers is R O R or we can say R O R dash. Here oxygen is obviously a divalent atom, an atom which can bond to two alkyl groups very easily. Uh, but R O R and R O R dash have a slight difference. Such ethers which have the general formula of ROR are called simple ethers or we can say symmetric ethers. Now symmetric or simple because, the, because both the uh, alkyl groups uh, attached to the oxygen atom are same. So if an if you have a if you have an ether in which both the alkyl groups are same, this would be called as a symmetric or a simple ether. Those ethers in which the both alkyl groups are different, R O R dash shows different alkyl groups, is obviously you can you can guess asymmetric or you can say mixed mixed ethers. Now the uh, examples for symmetric and asymmetric ethers, let's say the alkyl group is methyl. So methyl bonded to oxygen bonded to methyl. This is both alkyl groups are same. This is a symmetric ether. And if we take a methyl group CH3O bonded to C2H5. Now this my friends is the asymmetric ether. So ethers are those organic compounds uh, which are represented by the general formula of ROR or ROR dash. Ethers basically are produced from alcohols. Uh, when alcohol, uh, when two molecules of uh, uh, alcohol, they bond together by releasing water, uh, they mostly result uh, into an ether. Let's say ROH is an alcohol and ROH is another alcohol, two alcohol, they could be same or different. So if this hydrogen and this hydroxy group, they make, uh, they re they make H2O and the H2O is released, of course then this oxygen will bond with this alkyl group, so you will have R, O, H is gone, and then, then you have R. Now this is an ether. So you can see that once the alcohol undergo dehydration, you know, dehydration is a process in which water is uh, removed. Okay, dehydration. So you can call alcohols as N uh, you can call al um, ethers as anhydrides of alcohols. Now, anhydride 
means without water. Anhydride of alcohol. So you can call um, ethers anhydride of alcohols. Uh, but recently they are called alkyl um, oxides nowadays because the formula is uh, ROR, RO, or simply you can say CN, H2N plus 2O. Now this is alkyl oxide. So they are also called as the alkyl oxides. All right. I hope you have understood the uh, definition of ethers. I'll repeat for you. Ethers are those organic compounds which are represented by the general formula of ROR. OROR dash or CNH2N plus 2O. They are the anhydrides of alcohols. They are produced when uh, two molecules of alcohol release water and uh, upon dehydration they form the um, ethers. Now ethers are important organic compounds but before we study their importance and preparation we will first check out their IUPAC nomenclature. If you guys know International Union and for Pure and Applied Chemistry has set some rules for the naming of organic compounds is called the nomenclature. We have been studying nomenclatures since the very first day of organic compounds or organic chemistry. I hope you also understand the difference between symmetric and asymmetric uh, ethers here. Naming will come uh, afterwards. So let us let's, let me start with the, the basic uh, ether CH3 OCH3. Now this is methyl. This is methyl. The name of this compound is dimethyl ether. I hope it makes total sense. Di for two, methyl, dimethyl, O for ether. Uh, I can take another one. Let's say C2H5OC2H5. Now this time, you guys will guess the name because here if it is methyl, this is obviously two carbons, so ethyl. So if it is dimethyl ether, what this should be? Yep, that's right, diethyl ether. So two methyls, dimethyl, two ethyls, diethyl ether. But diethyl ether is the most important ether used in the laboratories, industries, everywhere. In fact, diethyl ether is so much important that sometimes it is called just ether. Yep, although ether is a family of organic compounds, but the diethyl ether due to its importance is just is called just if ether. Like in the general life, if you talk about alcohol, you're talking about ethyl alcohol, but alcohol is also a family. Now these, both of them, them are symmetric ether, and these names are common or trivial names. They are not IUPAC names. I want to come up with more examples. Before I go to, the, to more examples, I want to tell you what IUPAC says. According to the IUPAC rules, these are alkyl oxides. So what we do is we basically consider one, ox, one alkyl group attached with the oxygen, the smaller one, and we call it, this, this is methoxy. So methoxy, this is methane. So the IUPAC name is methoxy methane. Can you help me with this one? This time both the alkyl groups are same. So we can attach any one with oxygen. So this is ethoxy and this is ethane. You're right. So ethoxy ethane. So it is proved uh, that according to IUPAC, the um, ethers are alkooxy alkanes. Let me write in a bold letters for you. Al 
Cooxy alkane. See that? There's no space in between. So alkoxy alkanes. So meth oxy methane, eth oxy ethane. And let us continue our practice with another one. I hope you will help me here. Uh, CH3OC2H5. Now this time this is asymmetric ether. You can combine um, uh, this smaller, smaller alkyl group with oxygen, and that is your methoxy. So according to IUPAC, this is methoxy, and this is two carbons, so methoxy ethane. In common method, however, it is called ethyl methyl ether. Ethyl, methyl, ether. You can say methyl, ethyl, ether. It's not IUPAC, so it doesn't matter which way you go. However, methoxy ethane is correct. Ethoxy methane will be incorrect because the, the smaller, uh, smaller one um, uh, alkyl group must be attached with the oxygen. So it is methoxy ethane. It cannot be ethoxy methane it would be taken as a mistake there so i hope you understand the, the the basics of the naming in here with the ethers let us extend and go for more practice you can see i can i can make for you let, let's say ch3 ch2 ch2 o ch3 now, what is the common name? Yeah, first give me common name. Common name will be what? Methyl and propyl ether. Right? Methyl and propyl ether. That's a common name. But for IUPAC, you must combine the smaller alkyl group with the oxygen. Since the smaller is meth, this is O, meth oxy. And this is one, two, three. You can also number it. One, two, three. Numbering is okay for compounds of three carbons or more. So it is what, what it is. It is uh, meth oxy propane. No space. Okay? Meth oxy propane. You can also, also write it as one methoxypropane right so this is methoxypropane or methyl and propyl ether it will be very interesting to bring in, bring in another compound here ch3 o uh, ch3 ch and ch3 these two are somewhat similar here um, the methoxy part is same, but uh, this is n-propane and this is isopropane. So if this is n-propane, this is isopropane, how, how you want to name uh, this compound with a common naming, right? Uh, yep, methyl, yeah, isopropyl ether. I would suggest that we should go for isopropyl first. Isopropyl methyl, since it's not IUPAC naming, so it doesn't matter, but let's go with the alphabetical order. Isopropyl methyl ether or methyl isopropyl ether. Why isopropyl? Because this time three carbons are like this, not a straight. And if you want to go IUPAC naming, my friends, IUPAC naming will ask for numbering. So we will number not the alkyl, which is smaller and bonded to the oxygen, it is methoxy. We will number the, the longer chain, you know, this is the basic alkane rules. So we go one, two, three. Now if this is one methoxypropane, can you tell me what is this? Mm -hmm. Yep, two methoxy. Why two methoxy? Because the methoxy is attached to the carbon number two. So one methoxypropane, two methoxypropane. 
I hope you get that, right? Simple ether, simple ether, mix, mix, and mix. Okay, I hope you get it. It's pretty easy to understand. It's like, it's fun, right? So let me make some more examples for you. Now, this is a CH3. Now, if I make a CH, CH, now this is called isobutane, my friends. There are four carbons, but one is the branch. This is isobutane. I can give a O and then I can write C2H5. So tell me, common name, give it to me, right? This is ethyl, this is isobutyl. So what, what is it? Ethyl isobutyl ether. That's very simple because the common naming does not need anything else, just the two different kind of groups and then the ether in the end. So meth, um, ethyl isobutyl ether. What about IUPAC? Now, IUPAC will definitely need us to uh, bond or consider this uh, alkoxy group. Methoxy? Methoxy. This time, mm -hmm. ethoxy for two carbon. And of course, numbering, right? So when you go number the chain, we will try to number the longest one and start from the alkoxy group. So one, two, three. Wow. You can see that we have now two branches. One is this branch, the alkyl group over here. Let me point out for you. And one is the, our, our alkoxy. Now the rules say that you should name the other branches first. And the alkoxy uh, will be attached with the main uh, name, the parent alkane name. So it's going to be 2-methyl, right? And 1-ethoxy propane. Now here you can write 1-ethoxy, 2-methyl propane, but that would be wrong. We will, we will write the alkoxy part with the parent alkane, the, the main ring which we have numbered, right? So the common naming, ethyl, isobutyl, ether, and the IUPIC naming, 2-methyl, 1-ethoxy, propane. Now let me explain, the naming of the ethers is quite uh, uh, interesting and maybe it will require you lots of pausing and re rewinding the video so kindly do that, it will be good for us, okay? Now, uh, can, uh, can my guys tell me? Let's, let's find out more. Uh, this is CH3, C, let's say CH2, CH3, CH3. Guys, one, two, three, four, five. Five, is it n-pentane, right? No, yeah. Isopentane, what is it? Neopentane. And the oxygen, and let's say CH3. Now, can you tell me the common name and the IUPIC name side by side? Common name? Yep. Methyl. Neopentyl. Ether. Right? For IUPIC naming, you treat this as the alkoxy group and then you go number the chain. If you see from here, uh, we have two uh, branches, right? We don't treat methoxy as a branch because it goes with the parent name. So what is the IUPIC name? Yep, tell me. 2, comma, 2, then dimethyl for, of course, two methyls and one methoxy and one, two, three. Yep, propane. Sorry, should have been in a line. So methoxy, propane, there's no space. So there's just this one word. No space here, no space, no space. This is one word, methoxy, propane. So kindly take care of that. I hope you have uh, seen some uh, namings here and uh, you can write the name pretty much easily. Now we go for some uh, bigger structures and let's see how you do those, right? I will make a structure for you. CH3, CH2, CH3, 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 CH3
OCH2, let us say OCH3 and CH3 2. First thing we extend this. You guys know it, right? We write CH3, CH2, CH. Now this OCH3 is in the small brackets. Being in the small bracket, it reflects that it's not the part of the chain at all. So it has to go either up or down, right? OCH3. In your mind, you know this is the methoxy, right? And then this CH comes over here. There are two CH3, so one CH3 here and one CH3 here. Now let us forget the common naming. Uh, let's go with the IUPAC. From where you're gonna number the chain? One, two, three, one, two, three. So methoxy group is obviously at the similar location from either side. So you can go take any side, let's say one, two, three, four, five. This is our branch. So guys, four, methyl, right? Three, methoxypentane, no space. Hope you get it. The namings is just like the alkanes. Because alkanes are the basic for the naming. So no matter smaller ethers or bigger ethers, rules are same. So there's no need to panic and just follow the um, rules and you are going to end up doing a very good uh, name. It's not going to be bothering you at all. Let's try some uh, more and uh, example. Let's say CH3, we have three and then we have C, and then we have uh, C, and then we have CH3, all right? And we have them, okay, CH. Then we have CH, and we have OC2H5, right? And then we have CH3. Now extend, In the, when we extend the structure, we actually don't write those which are in the brackets. So we write just this C, this CH. Don't write this one. Do not write the uh, bracket one CH3. Jump to this CH. Don't write the bracket. Okay, just jump to the CH3. Now let's do what we can do with it. This C had three methyls. So one comes on the top. This goes on the side, this goes down, right? This CH3, anywhere top or bottom. This oc 5 anywhere top or bottom. If you are using your mind, guys, you have now come to conclusion that this is our ethoxy and numbering from B from the right side. So one, two, three, four, five, guys. 3, comma 4, comma 4. How many methyls? 1, 2, 3. What is it? Tri methyl. 2. What is 2? Two? 2 is ethoxy. And what is the parent alkene name? 1, 2, 3, 4. Again, 5. So it's going to be pentane. So that this is how you write the. Um, the IUPAC naming of the ethers. IUPAC naming are basically more important. So this is the IUPAC name, the IUPAC name, and the IUPAC name is then in the blue. The red are the common names. So because in the examination, we are mostly asked for the IUPAC names. So you should understand IUPAC names make sense. They follow some rule patterns. So this is the thing. This is how you can write the name from the given structure of the um, ethers. What if, what if we have to do the reverse? What if we have to uh, write down the structure from a given name? That would be even easier. So I'll just uh, flip over this page. I'll try to save the pages because you know these days we cannot buy the pages. 
So here we go. Uh, how, what if we have a name and we have to write its uh, uh, structure? So it's not very difficult or very, very simple. Okay. So let's, um, let me first start with the first one. Di isopropyl ether. Use your mind. Two isopropyls and between them, there should be oxygen. So the oxygen bonded to two isopropyls. Now, if I make three carbon straight, carbon, 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 and carbon, 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 there would be dipropyl ether. To make it diisopropyl ether, I will have to make CH3 and then CH and then CH3. Now this is isopropyl and another similar isopropyl on this side. CH3, CH and then CH3. Now this is diisopropyl ether. Is it easy? Yep. The next one, let's say 2-methoxyheptane. So heptane stands for 7. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 2 has methoxy, O, C, H, 3. Now you guys know what we do with the remaining carbons. Yep, fill them up with hydrogen. One bond, so how many uh, hydrogens? Three. Three bonds, how many? One, because carbon's valency is four. So if a carbon has a single bond, it has th three more bonds to complete. If it has three bonds out of four, one remains. And if it has two bonds, two, two bonds, two hydrogen, I have taught you this back in the classroom. And if you guys know it, this is 2-methoxyheptane. If it's even interesting and very easy. Writing the structure from a given name is always easier than to write a name of a given structure. Because when you have a structure, there are multiple ways to write the name. Common, trivial, IUPAC, and rules mix up. But when you have a name and you write a structure, there's only one way you go. There's no need to, you know, there's no confusion. Just, there's just, you go in just one way. The third is, uh, name I'm gonna write for you is gonna be ethyl tertiary butyl ether. Now I'll, I'll just make two names. Huh? Ethyl tertiary butyl and I will make ethyl and butyl ether. I'll also make here ethyl uh, isobutyl. No, because I have to explain a few things here. Ether. First, ethyl and butyl. What do you do? Oxygen, one side, C2H5. Other side, one, two, three, four. Straight because this is N-butyl, and the hydrogens can be filled afterwards. This, my friend, in the IUPIC naming is ethoxybutane. Am I right? Ethoxybutane. Here we go. Now this one, isobutyl. So this is C2H5. Oh, ethoxy. Now isobutyl is four carbon, but three are in a straight chain and one is a branch. So one, two, three, and this is the branch. Now that you can see the brown one is the number second carbon. So we just fill up the hydrogens and you have this compound, ethyl isobutyl ether. IUPAC, yeah, ethoxy, one, two, three, 2-methyl, 1-ethoxybutane. So this is what we have done before. And here, tertiary butyl. Now, N-butyl, isobutyl, tertiary butyl is even different. Tertiary butyl is, uh, again, for carbons, but the carbon in the center is bonded to three carbons. And that's a tertiary carbon, you know? RRR. 
This is tertiary butyl and the O and the ethyl. You can see the difference. This is isobutyl. This shape is like that. If this, this O is bonded here to this carbon, there will be no hydrogen. Then it will become a tertiary carbon. Currently, this carbon is primary. So this one will be uh, 1, 2, 3, 2 ethoxy. Ethoxy, sorry. 2 ethoxy. Um, this is not right. First, we have the branch name 2 methyl. Right? 2 ethoxy propane. In this case, 1, 2, 3, 2 methyl, 1 ethoxy propane. So, there, this is how you write the structures from a given name. Every year in the examination, my dear friends, there's a long question in our paper which asks us to write the structures from the given names or write the names from given structures. It is a long question, 14 marks. And there are always two to three ethers always there because ethers naming is not that straightforward. And the students really get confused while naming ethers as compared to other uh, compounds like alcohols and phenols. Uh, and today we have spent 31 minutes already. So uh, I hope that uh, you have uh, understood this uh, naming of ether. It will require more practice. You can give yourself some questions. Once we complete the ninth chapter, I will uh, share with you a document in, the, in your WhatsApp groups with more, more names to write from organic compounds. I hope that will help you. So today's assignment is mostly is rather a little challenging for you. Uh, yesterday I was so glad parents parents have really um, contributed with me in order to accomplish this task and they have uh, uh, given their time and they have sat with their kids and I checked the copies of were very very good. All the copies, all the test copies and paper were amazing and I really liked them and they are very good. But, I, but one, one mention which I should do is the copy, the work of Hafsa, Hafsa Chand and uh, her dad was uh, checking her work and her copy was awesome. Was, she was very great, especially when she was uh, doing the reactions with sulfuric acid. She just gave like this two arrows, you know. She just gave one arrow, then split it two arrow. She was a bit creative there, uh, hot and cold. So it was more interesting. I hope that everyone will um, talk to her and take her advice. So uh, assignment is again page number uh, two one two and two one three. There are two questions. Question number three is to write the names, uh, the structure from given names and question 4 is on page 213 where you have to write the names of given structures. Now from number 14 to number 19, these are ethers. Uh, 13 and before that is alcohol and phenols. And on this page from number 5 to 8, these are ethers. So kindly Study these rules, uh, refer to your book as well, uh, find something interesting from your book as well, if it is good. Mention, you can also su suggest me if you want to, me to repeat a few things. Um, and uh, kindly uh, do this work and uh, share with me. You can just share with me anytime. Just uh, when you finish, you just share and then you just do your thing. Don't uh, be waiting for me and whenever I'll come and see and I'll check and I will definitely give comments. I check every copy and it's really, really satisfying for me. So this is it. Uh, thank you so much for this class. I hope you will be enjoying this one and uh, stay safe, stay home and have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye.